quarter. It is uh, 3.32 or so on Thursday afternoon. Blustery, windy day outside, but hey, it's West Texas. We will start the meeting with public comment. The board takes public comment on all items in the regular agenda. Public input on a regular agenda item will be taken at its appropriate discussion. Public input on an item not on the agenda or consent agenda may be identified and requested for consideration by the board at this time. The board may request an item to be placed on future agenda or for a consent agenda item to be moved to the regular agenda for public comment. Do we have any public comment at this time? Do we have any public? <laughs> <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving right along, let's get into the consent agenda and consideration of approving the March 23rd minutes. Has everybody had a chance to look at those comments? Anything? Move we approve them. Only, only thing I didn't see in there, that was my birthday, by the way. Related <laughs> <laughs> happy. Yes, happy birthday. We I second approving. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, consider the minutes approved. Let's move into the regular agenda. The first item up is discussion of the proposed, proposed Community <laughs> Relations Center and relation, any recommendations thereof. That must be you, Ron. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Good afternoon, Brent Casey, Recreation Manager. So as you know, we put together a committee for the uh, proposed Community Recreation Center. And um, they, we had our second meeting this month of April on the 18th. So some of the things that we talked about is what we're gonna talk about today. And, uh, it was a very good discussion, lasted a little over an hour at the meeting. We actually kind of ended it there at the hour mark. But, um, uh, we're, meet, we're meeting quarterly. Uh, some of the things that we talked about was recreational needs for San Angelo and how to get what those needs are. So we were talked about possible surveys, online surveys, things like that, that we could send out and possibly see what the citizens of San Angelo want instead of just the people on the committee. Uh, we have a lot of ideas, things that would be great in a new recreation center at some point in time down the road, but we want to hear from the citizens and also some of the other businesses that may be interested in partnering in some way, shape, or form with that and the other foundations around town. So that's something that was brought up. Um, funding sources and people to get involved. We talked about how hard this is and who would be, have a vested interest in getting, being a part of that. So that's some... That's one of the things we're going to be focusing on in the future, and we've actually already started. But, um, uh, we met with the, uh, Carl and myself met with the area, um, San Angelo Area Foundation this morning, had a very good conversation about some possible things that we need to look at and considerations that need to be taken uh, into consideration for different locations and things like that. Uh, speaking of locations, we talked about Central located area uh, for the new propo or proposed recreation center around town. Uh, we have our favorite, but that doesn't mean it's a necessarily the correct place to be. So we talked about southwest area of town because there's some construction going on out there, some new businesses going in. We talked about Lone Wolf, which is a uh, part of the land that the city currently owns. And then College Hills area, but we have to make sure it's out of the floodplain there, but it would be good because the trail goes right through there. And then we also talked about Santa Fe, which is kind of my favorite, but not set in stone by any means. The timeline, a um, couple of years to raise funds and get people on board and just get the community involved in the idea. And then three years to plan and build is kind of what we're looking at. So definitely not going to be anything quick, uh, although it is something that is needed. Like right now, immediately, we need to just throw something up and get it going for tomorrow. But obviously, that's not the way things work, so it's not going to happen. We talked about many different foundations and people to talk to, such as ASU, SAISD, many other organizations that we need to bring in and get involved. And uh, I was told at lunch that there was a good fellow and the citizens of San Angelo, some different people, um, they brought it up at their meeting this morning. So the word is getting out there and I heard they had a good conversation. So 
it's a, a positive thing, I feel. Um, we talked about forming a coalition, uh, people to speak to and get on board, a list of health groups th that would have a vested interest in something such as a new recreation center, um, such as Esperanza or some organizations that's focused on kids was brought up. Talked about gathering information from the last census to see like possible information on where we might decide on where to put it, uh, how many kids are in different areas, that type of thing. And we talked about a briefing paper. And if you look at your packet that Ida gave you, you should have something like that. And uh, looks like this. This is just a rough draft. But what we're after there is to get something that we can hand to you guys and to everybody else that we're talking to about it, the uh, proposed recreation center, and let them see what we're trying to accomplish and get in there. And obviously that can be changed. It's kind of where we are right now. But what, depending on what comes back from the survey from the citizens or what we talk to businesses or different foundations, I mean, those things could change that are in there. But it is a, a draft that is being put together now. Uh, you, looking at the first copy but there's already it's already going back in for some changes but that's kind of where we are and what we discussed in the meeting any questions about that one comments i think that's really i think this is really great any other comments i wonder is this something trying to think ahead and, and as, as as we move on is this something maybe that uh one of y'all, when you write your articles for the paper, could write about something like this and, and you know, maybe include the fact that, that there is a committee that meets quarterly and the, the next projected date might be or something. Because y'all do wonderful articles. I read your articles every Sunday uh, as, as they rotate through, and, and I enjoy reading them. But this might be something to, to plug into something like that. Yes. I've, I've, we've written one article. Um, I think Brent's mentioned it, too. Actually, I've got another article that should print this Sunday that talks about the community center and perhaps going at uh, Santa Fe Park. Um, we haven't talked about the committee yet, but we can keep, we can keep the word out there through the, our articles. I, I think that's a, that's a good thing to keep the word out. I, I, I liked hearing that the, the good fellow rec people, and I, I know they meet occasionally, and, and they pop that up. That's a good thing. The more people we can get on our side, the, the better mm -hmm. off, the better the chances yeah. may be. Have you had any interaction with? Not yet. It was Shannon was mentioned uh, at the meeting. I haven't reached out to them yet. Uh, today was the first meeting that we had, and it was very good. So, uh, looking forward to getting with Shannon and many other different organizations, foundations around town, people around town, and just kind of getting it going that we are working toward this. I mean, obviously the the funding isn't there right now, but you know it's going to take years down the road, but. You know, it's a definite need, and so far the feedback's been great on what we have received, but Shannon, specifically, not yet. Did you meet with Matt Lewis? Uh, yes, sir, we did. You said it was a good meeting. What good did you get out of that? What good did we get out of that? He had lots of positive uh, comments about it, uh, kind of just some things that we needed to consider, but super nice guy. I mean, wealth of knowledge there about different areas around town and everything, so... Um, I know I learned a lot in the hour and 15 minutes that we were in there talking to him just from things around town and things that we need to consider. I have well, a couple pages of notes from the meeting that I was just writing as fast as I could, just things to take into consideration and, and things that we need to uh, take a look at. I believe that in uh, the number of projects going on in San Angelo, this has a merit. Yeah, I, I believe he did, yes. Are y'all coming up with any kind of um, just this project targeted marketing plan? Because like this is a big project for us, and so is there like a scheme for how we're gonna specifically market this one? There isn't anything specific other than what you're looking at with the talking paper thing right there. Um, the little brief of kind of what it's gonna be. That's the only thing we've got to so far. I mean, the committee's only met twice, so. We're still at the beginning stages, but it, the word is getting out, so just want to kind of keep you guys up to date on where we are as the board and, and uh, 
we're going to keep working toward it. And at some point in time before Carl and myself retire, it's going to happen. So I We're think it promised. would be good to to advertise the the next meeting as much as we can as 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 we talk to people whenever the committee is going to meet another time and and call it an open meeting if you like see how many see if we can get people to come. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. You can do that. <clears throat> even not it doesn't even have to be the same people every time, but if we can call it an open meeting yeah. and and make it a general invite and get people to come, uh, the word will start circulating. Uh, the local millionaire might attend and <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> Nice. We need a few of them, I think. But uh, yes. <laughs> one thing that was brought up this morning was why are we focusing on just one? We got the different areas that we're looking at, and uh, you know, it's obviously more facilities would mean more money, a lot more money. But why are we just focusing on one when the city could use three or four in the different areas? So you know, that's something that I took notes on, and and it was, I felt that was a very good point. Um, you know, it, it is something that we could strive for in the future. I mean, you know, you're looking even further down the road at going at something like that extent, but it was something that was brought up, so good idea. Might be easier to design three small ones than one huge one. Right. Maybe another question. Uh, did you think about meeting with Howard Taylor? Howard is director of the museum, but it happens that he is, for me, the only visionary we have in San Angelo in terms of planning? He is. <clears throat> I don't think he was on our list, but we can add him. Yes. He's a fantastic thinker. He is. Good, sir. Get him added. Is that the same Howard from the Farm Museum? Yes, well, he's, he's helping with push with, that along. Yeah, yeah. We're getting check, close. Make, make sure I was thinking of the same person. All right. Anything else? Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'm not going anywhere. You still get to listen to my voice. So, <clears throat> Northside Recreation Center, consideration of the use of the Northside Recreation Center and consider recommending any related matters. Um, not going to go into the long history of the Northside Recreation Center, but the short history is for the past few years, it has been leased out to Paul and Church. Uh, they've used it for a number of different things. And we are happy to have it back because we are in desperate need of space, number one. Um, mood lighting there, sorry. <clears throat> space is something that we don't have the money to build right now, so to get it back, uh, we took it back on March 22nd officially, so we have the keys. Uh, looking and coming up with a plan on how we're going to use it, and that's kind of what we're here to talk about today. Um, as for the San Angelo Recreation, Using it, we definitely need the, the gym space. You've heard me talk in the past few meetings about how our programs are growing. We don't even have the gym space for programs throughout the year at certain times of the year because we have the youth programs going so the adult programs stop or something like that. So the gym space is something that we're definitely looking into using and will be using uh, in the very near future. Um, some classes, uh, it's got some other rooms in there. This is one picture of the gym here actually uh, it's from like where the scores table would be you can see the upstairs area there's two rooms one to the left and one to the right and then the, um, the it's not actually graffiti there it kind of looks like it but it is something that Paul Ann did there so it's actually very tastefully done but something that will probably take off now that they're not in there but uh, this is a better a little bit better image of the gym um, the gym looks like it's in pretty decent shape building is basically just as the other two are in desperate need of major repairs and in desperate needs of uh, being brought up to date if you will and um, we actually need newer spaces bigger spaces same thing as the other two rec centers that we currently have which are Southside and Carl Ray Johnson Uh, the court is not a full-size court so it's mostly for youth you put 10 full adults full adults my size playing basketball in there it gets a little bit crowded Um, another area or same area just a different angle there and you see it does have a scoreboard up there it's not currently working so we'll see if we can get that working but it is in there Uh, this is one of the rooms closest to the entrance of the uh, building that's from on top of the hill 
on Magdalene, I believe, is the street. And uh, looking down at the building, so we'll obviously get the signs taken down off the buildings, but uh, basically it looks the same as our other two. So some of the facility issues, uh, it's old, falling apart, as we said, and uh, not a true rec center. It's basically a gym space with a couple of rooms. So when you have that space, obviously there are things you can do with it, but it's not a true rec center as what we're looking at and wanting to have in the future. So that is still our goal is to get those things, but we are happy to have this space back. Um, definitely something that is needed uh, all throughout the year. Some of the things that we're looking at doing in there would be as I said, the gym floor for many different uses. And we're also looking at not this summer, but possibly next summer, a third location for summer camp. So currently we have the two that are, have 60 children at each location and they're always booked full. So we're possible add another one if we can uh, figure out the funding so that we can pay the people that we need, the staff that we'll have to have out there. So I'll be working on that here pretty soon, but you might hear more about that in the future. A request for proposals. We've had a few people show interest in it. Um, it's the word traveled quick that uh, Paul Ann was giving it up. So we have a nonprofit private school. Um, they're starting a private school. They are interested in renting the gym space in order to have sports, um, gym time, PE classes, things like that. We have a private owned business um, that was looking to go in there. And then we also have the area that we have at Southside uh, and the upstairs for the boxing that we have. Uh, they're looking at wanting to use the space and showed some definite interest. What my intention is, is to use the facility as best as we can uh, in its condition, uh, basically be the gym space for different sports and things like that, possibly some other classes, and then also try to rent it out. But so the, the places that want ex exclusive use of the facility, that is where I'm going to have the issue and we're going to have the problem is because once they set up the ring or they set up the things that, this, that the business is talking about, um, which could be some other things because it is a residential area, so there's a lot to look at with the business aspect going in there. But the people that want to just keep it for themselves the entire year round type of thing, that's what's gonna be the issue because we need it as well. So we're happy to have it back, but um, if you wanna talk about requests for proposals or whatever your ideas or thoughts are about possibly leasing it out at some points in time throughout the year, then I'd like to open it up and see what your thoughts are. So one option is for us to go back in there and, and run it completely with the resources that we have, because I doubt we're gonna get any additional general fund to, to run it or to staff it back up. He possibly could move some money around uh, to staff it somewhat. <clears throat> the, thing, the bottom line is we don't want to lose the gym space, and it does have potential to, have, to be a place for day, uh, summer camps. Um, so the thought is possibly putting out a request for proposal that, that offers the space up as long as you collaborate with us and work with us to allow us to use the gym at times that we need to use the gym. And that's kind of the thought right now. Well, the private school that want, was interested in it, would they allow the shared use? Like they would have it during certain times, certain days of the week yes. um, versus, so that that would be a decent consideration, or you would consider that because it would be shared. Yes. But you said something about the boxing ring would be a little more permanent. The person that runs the boxing program, Sal, he is looking for something more permanent where he can actually set up a ring. He doesn't. He has a ring, but there's no space for it out south, at Southside to be set up and utilized all the time. <coughs> so that would take the entire gym floor. That would take the gym floor. We wouldn't be able to use it. That okay. would be the issue with that, yes, ma'am. If he's okay with it being there some months out of the year but not all the year, that might be doable. Oh, But we're okay. not sure if he... We're not sure of at this point if he is. But the private school, in my brief conversation with her, uh, yes, she was more than willing to work with us on whatever time we could give her in the gym. Um, she's just looking for the space. It's close to where their home is going to be, which she didn't even give me the address. But yeah, she's more than willing to work if it's something we can work out. So.
I'm thinking if it's like the neighborhood schools, then they would be familiar with the building, and then you would continue to put those same kids through the other programs that you would have there. So, absolutely. Anything? <laughs> we're just trying to get some feedback. If we're kind of headed the a good direction. There's nothing unsafe about the building other than the fact that it's old and unused. I mean, it's not in, it's not going to fall apart. Is that, that's not where you're going, right? Not that we've found so far. We'll obviously get facility maintenance. You did say that, it, but that was figurative. To do it. Yeah, it's, it's close to falling apart. Not quite. But, <clears throat> no, we'll actually get them to walk through and do a, a, a really good check of everything before. And currently there's not any electricity or water or anything on in there, so... You know, it's something we'll get turned on here real quick, but haven't even done that yet. So, I think you're on the right track, considering a partner that would allow you to do what you want to do. If not, then uh, you would have to start alone, I would think. <laughs> right, we just got it back, so we don't want to say here you can use it again. We definitely need the space. So. I think we ought to move into using it for what we want to use it for. And then, uh, you know, if somebody wants to Me. offer a share program, yeah, then, sure. then it's something that, that you know, tell us what you want and let us figure out how it might work. But I think we ought to make the prime use of it, for mm -hmm. sure. Do what I wanted to hear right there. So. We've been talking about needing basketball courts. Yeah. So. I, oh, here we go. <laughs> if there's any money that can be squeezed and moved and you know, buy some giant floor fans or you know <laughs> any, anything to make it a little more more user friendly out there. Then, uh, then let's let's work on that and see what we can we can do. It is just like the other two facilities. I mean, there is no air conditioning in the gym, but the other rooms do have air conditioning. So for the summer camps and things like that, there, if we move to a third location out there, and nothing goes wrong with the air conditioning between now and next summer, then you know they would have a place that they could go and cool off and everything. So the morning hours they would be in the gym doing gym activities. So. Is there some land around that can be used to additional building? For an additional building? Additional rooms or whatever. To expand there? Like if we are ever to expand just yeah. for any reason, is there enough room on the land to do so? It's possible, but <laughs> a critical, in my mind, a critical mistake mistake was made when it was built where it is to begin with. If you notice, it's about 20 feet lower than the grade around it. It's it's where all the stormwater goes in that area. Um, I think it, because of where it's at, I think it would be a mistake to, to expand it there. Exactly, exactly. It was. Back in... <clears throat> How much of it does does parks own all of that? Yes, the city owns all of that, and there's probably another additional eight to ten acres to the south of there, to the right of the picture, and it's all depressed. It's all lower than the, the surrounding area, and that that is where the stormwater goes. Is that that park? It often gets flooded, and I think the rec, rec center has maybe been flooded a couple times since I've been here. Um, the last 17 years because the water, the water level. What drove Paul Ann to turn it back? Give it back to Paul Ann? <laughs> no, water. I mean, I wonder why they gave it up. Oh. Are they, are they considering something of their own out there somewhere? They didn't, they didn't say anything like that to us. I, they were running programs out of there, and in the first few years, I think we had five years total. We've had that a long time. The first few years were pretty good, pretty strong. The, la the last two years, the activity just really kind of went down, and the last program they had out of there was a, a food pantry program. Um, it, it just The programs just kind of died down. I, my, my guess is the leadership at the church just decided not to continue it, but I don't know the reason why. And it was something we met, I think it was December time frame, we met with them and uh, we asked what their intentions were. And at that point in time, they were still kind of on the fence. They wasn't sure if they were going to give it up for the option year or not, or keep it for the option year, rather. So we told them if they were interested in giving it up, we would like to have it back because we need the space. So. 
Any other discussion? Questions, comments? Uh, I think it's safe to say that we all think moving on with whatever you can do with it is a good thing. Awesome, thank you. Let's talk about the dog park, Carl. I was out there the other day. It's very nice. Good. Well, we have really better news today because construction will restart next week. Now, I want to show you um, what we've done. We've done some improvements out there now, and we did have to make a command decision um, a couple of months ago. As you recall, the small dog park was slated for, for this location. Part of the challenge that we got we had in getting that developed was all the, the, the wonderful rains that we had kept that area very moist. <clears throat> and we couldn't get in there and grade it uh, appropriately so it, uh, the area would drain water well. <clears throat> so um, when we looked at it a little more recently, <clears throat> digging holes to figure out how we could get the fence in, the water table is just too high there. The water just stays in there. The holes that we drilled uh, for the post, they held water the entire time, and that's not really, would be good for us to put the fence in where it's basically sitting in the water. So um, what we decided to do is this area has already been fenced off, as you know. We're, we are putting a fence in here that's gonna start next week, where this becomes the small dog park, and this becomes the large, dog park. The advantage is it's, it's at one location. <clears throat> you have two different entrances. This is the existing entrance, which will now be the small dog park entrance. And the, some of the fence work that will go in next week will create this entrance to the large dog park. So you have to walk a little bit farther. And then this maintenance gate back here. <clears throat> if you notice, a lot, of, a lot of the trees, most of the trees have been planted out there. I think there's probably just a few more left to plant. Let me zoom in. So, and at one point we were looking at um, <clears throat> doing a little pocket park down here at this par part of the parking lot. We still are gonna try to do that, but in a little bit different location, I'll show you. This is looking at the fenced in areas. So we think it still maintains adequate space for both of the parks. This is that pocket park that was going to be next to the parking lot. Now will be next on the way to the dog park. <clears throat> so the parking lot is here. You walk this way, or you could walk this way. And this becomes the pocket park. So what that is is basically just some curbing with a little bit of landscaping, some boulder benches, and an area that has picnic tables with some trees around it. And we created this area possibly as a future spot where you could put a pavilion. Just take those tables out, put the pavilion in, put the tables back. <clears throat> so it kind of creates a nice little gathering spot, a communal spot for folks uh, that are visiting the dog park. And so next week the fencing is scheduled to go in and I'm not sure if that's gonna be one or two weeks and then following that, we'll go back in and finish the rest of the irrigation and the rest of our work so that we can open it up, hopefully end of, end of May. This walkway has already been installed. Um, the only other really concrete work that we'll need to do <clears throat> is a connection here. And then the curbing, the curbing that goes around in here. <clears throat> we're, still, we're still working with a Boy Scout to do the landscaping of the pocket park they're still on board for his Eagle Scout project. That is the update on the dog park. Finally, get it done. <laughs> no smoking. <laughs> At this location, under the new ordinance, it would be allowed. Unless a pavilion is added right here. Just an update. Any feedback? Looks good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited. People out there all the time. 
it's good to uh, offer uh, a place to stay in between the parking lot and the in the dog park. I think that you see a lot of people there. Yeah, it's, it's we great, thought it made sense. It's a great addition, definitely. By the way, I, I want you to volunteer if you need 800 bucks for the signs to give you a donation. The signs? Non smoking signs. <coughs> the mayor doesn't like the $800 <laughs> invoice. If you want, I can pick it up. <laughs> because I think it's ridiculous to argue about $800 of signs for non smoking areas. That's, that'll, that'll go back to council for the second reading Tuesday. If they tell you they can't pay, you say I have somebody who wants to pay for it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if, if it gets brought up. If it gets brought up. <laughs> I like where we're at with the dog park. I, do I, too. Okay. I think it's fine. As soon as we can pick and figure out a grand opening, we ought to set up some kind of grand yes. opening. It's looking like somewhere in June now. Get the standard times out there and. Get some pictures and get some dogs and lots of dogs. Make it right. Any other comments on the dog park? <coughs> Anybody have any future agenda items that they would like to put on at this time? Copy of the budget. Uh, the board typically doesn't look at, um, doesn't oversee the budget, but if you want a copy, we can get you a copy. But the question is, how much of it do you want? Because Parks and Recreation also includes the fort, the cemetery, civic events. Like, okay. So probably just Parks and Recreation. This year's budget or next year's proposed budget, which we don't have yet. Anything else? Yeah, do we have, uh, Carl, do you have anything else in the future agenda? Like you had worked on Bentwood Park, or whatever that, hang on, Brentwood. Brentwood. Brentwood, and do you have anything coming up? Um, I thought you had mentioned something about Unidad and Santa Rita, and maybe possibly Glenmore. I might have got them mixed up, but I'm just wondering, do you have anything, any future plans for updates, improvements to other parks that I would like to see that on our agenda if we have anything? So the ones that are funded, some of them, some of them are funded and some of them aren't funded. <clears throat> so like... Um, About one time funded, next time the ones that you're looking for funding. I don't... We've done that. We've done that before. We just haven't done it in a year. Yeah. I just like to go out and see how they move along and how their progress is. So we need to talk about prairie dogs. Do we need to talk about prairie dogs? Oh, prairie dogs. Do we need to put that on the agenda? I suppose I suppose we could. I need to get a report back from the um, the wildlife management official. I went, yes, we, I went out there and looked around, and it, it's no worse than any anything else around here. We have, I know we call them chipmunks where I come from. They call them prairie dogs down here. All right, we have ground squirrels in town. These yeah. are actual prairie dogs out at the Lake Mary Lee Park. If you haven't been out there, they're expanding their territory. So <laughs> it is a. <laughs> It is a they developing are. problem. It really is. So, some of the homeowners down there have mentioned it that the the prairie dogs are growing wider in their their hole digging. So I don't, I don't know if it's something we might want to look at or address. Or it is something we need to address. Um, the question is, what, how do we yeah, do it? How, how do we, how do, we do, do it delicately, <laughs> <laughs> appropriately? Yeah, uh, interesting. <laughs> 
Maybe we should put that on just for comment and consideration. Yes. Okay. See where we can go with it. The prairie dog plan. Yeah. Prairie dog plan. <laughs> <laughs> this is Parks and Recreation. Just like the show. <laughs> I was say I, I have prairie dog plan, but it probably isn't meant for public consumption. Okay. <laughs> anything else? Anybody? Carl, anything to say? I don't. I'll take a motion that we end. So moved. Second? Uh, let's see, it'll be, this is April, it'll be May 25th. June 25th. May 20th. May 25th. Sorry, May 25th. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ahead. You scared me for a minute. <laughs> I'm thinking ahead. Thank you. Have a nice evening, Brian. <laughs>